Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, how spread betting works. Why? Well, you can hardly fail to have missed the fact there's been a referendum this week and an awful lot of money was bet using this type of contract on the outcome. Now, 3.7 million was put down on Monday alone and that brought the total up to around 43 million, beating both the World Cup and the general election. And basically the product a lot of people have used to bet on the outcome is something called a spread bet. So worth knowing how these work, and also worth knowing if you're sick of politics, where else you can apply them. Now, the basics. A spread bet basically, in essence, allows you to win or lose, worth watching out for, money on the outcome of an event. And that event can be on almost anything. I loosely group them into political, elections and votes, probably heard enough about those this week, Sporting, so football fans, tennis fans, cricket fans can bet, as we'll see, on the outcome of games using spread bets, matches and so on. And over on the left hand, the right hand side, sorry, financial, so bets on shares, indices and so on. I'm going to start there, mention sporting and probably leave politics to one side for now. Now, a financial bet. Let's get straight in. Let's say you've got a view about where the FTSE 100 will be by this evening. At the very least, even if you don't know exactly where it will be, because few people know that, you have a view as to whether it will go up or down. Currently, the FTSE is at 6,200 points, let's say. If the FTSE rises, it might close at, say, 6,300 points. And if it falls, it might close at around 6,100 points. And you've got a view on whether you think it will fall or rise. Now, you're prepared to back that view. You bet on a fall in the FTSE between now and the close of play this evening at... £10 per point. That's your stake, if you like, and that can be varied, but that's your £10 per point stake. Now, what will be a good outcome? Well, if the FTSE is at 6,200 when you lay that bet, and it duly falls, as you expect, to let's say 6,100 points, what have you won? Well, you bet on a fall, so that's good news. You bet £10 per point, so very simple maths, you win 100 points. At £10 per point, that's £1,000. And bear in mind, this is money you've made from betting on something going down rather than up. Fantastic. But it can go wrong. So, for example, if the FTSE is at 6,200 when you lay your bet and it rises to 6,300 points and you've actually put a down bet on at £10 per point, well, unlucky, because now you've effectively lost 100 points and if the stake is £10 per point, that is going to cost you around £1,000. So this is, a, this is a way that you can win or lose a directional bet on something like an index. Now, why do they call it spread betting? Well, usually there's actually a two-way price quoted. So let's say the FTSE is around 6,200 points and you want to bet on whether it will rise or fall. You actually quoted two prices. So there's a bid price and an offer price from the spread betting company, let's say. Down bets start there and up bets start there and the point about the spread is it locks in a bit of profit for the spread betting company and the reason for that is that if the market doesn't move from 6,200 points there'll be people who've bet on it rising who will effectively lose a tenner and there'll be people who've bet on it falling who will effectively lose a tenner and those tenors go to the spread betting company that's how they lock in their profit if you like and at 10 pounds a point effectively that's a 10 pound gained the spread betting company from you. Now, these are known as geared products. Why? A lot of bang for your buck. It's to do with something called margin. I'm not going to labour this, but what is that? In essence, this stops you from walking away from the table without paying, if you want to see it that way. And the way it works is, let's say, an up bet of £10 per point on the FTSE 100 at 6,200 points, so you think it's going to close higher than that, is equivalent, if you want to see it that way, to buying around £62,000 worth of shares at £10 per point. So what the spread betting company do is they say, we don't need you to put a £62,000 deposit down, that would be like buying the shares themselves, we'll let you get away with between 1.5% and 15% of £62,000. So how would that look? All right, this is called gearing. Well, let's say you're going to place that bet on where the FTSE might go next from a position of 6,200 points. All right, you bet on a fall at £10 per point, and your initial margin is set at, say, 5% of the underlying value of the shares in question. 5% of 62,000 is 3,100 pounds. And then the FTSE does drop, as you expected, so you've won. 
Now, the question then is, okay, I've won a thousand pounds. How is that a geared return? Well, it's all to do with the size of that deposit. So, let's take a look at that. The market falls as you expect. All right, your down bet is worth £1,000. Your initial margin was £3,100. Although the FTSE has only dropped 100 points, which is just 1.6%, you've actually made £1,000 on a £3,100 deposit, which is more like 32%. That's gearing. And on the flip side, if your down bet had left you owing £1,000, effectively that would be deducted from your initial margin of £3,100, leaving you sitting on a loss of around a third of your money off just a 1.6% fall in the FTSE. Now, I'm just going to finish on a couple of other notes. How can other people use spread bets? Well, cricket fans might like to bet on England's chances of getting a decent score during a test match, for example. So imagine a quoted spread is 285 to 300 runs. You could bet at £2 per run on England doing well. If England, in fact, only score 260 runs, then you lose 40. Because don't forget, you'll be buying at 300, so you lose 40. If, on the other hand, you had placed a down bet on England, you would cash in the difference between 285 and 260 at your stake of £2 per run. So, just food for thought. Football fans can bet on all sorts of things. So, you can bet on goals scored, corners, cards, penalties, shirt numbers of goal scorers, highest, lowest scoring groups, tournament goals, wins, and so on, all using similar principles. A word of caution before you go and do that, if you want to do that, be very careful. Spread bets are geared, as I've mentioned, big profits, big losses potentially. Consider stop losses, talk to a broker about how you can limit your downside, that's worth doing. And I'd always say, make sure you understand the market before betting. So if you're going to bet on football, understand football and how the bets work. That's a good idea. And novice investors should normally take advice before jumping into a market like this one. With that caveat in mind, any questions, editor at killick.com. And to see related videos to this topic, please go to killickexplains.com.